a historic Christopher Museum, uh, named after a black man that uh, founded the city of Chicago, Dean Point Christopher. And uh, I thought it would be a great honor to uh, celebrate Black History Month uh, in this location. And uh, tonight we're going to have a couple of uh, special guests. Richard Boykin, he's running for clerk of the court. And uh, the man of the hour is coming at world, a man who's been working hard for you, working for reparations. Uh, a lot of y'all need to learn what reparations really means. And uh, he's been out here on the field, he's been fighting for your civil rights for hundreds of years. Professor, the whole nine thousand. I was totally amazed when I found out he's never been honored with all the things that he do. So he's our guest of honor. We also have Miss Tiana Ward. Tiana, one of our real good friends, passed away uh, earlier this year. Uh, her name was Doris Holder, and she just helped everybody. Matter of fact, she really helped Operation Push. She worked with the Adult Probation Department. Uh, she was a star supporter of Push, and so but she was always giving somebody a helping hand. And tonight we're going to honor Tiana because that's her too. She's always helping somebody. She's uh, everything, right, grants, the whole nine yards. Also, uh, <clears throat> I found it uh, strange that the NBA All-Star Game is coming to Chicago, Black History Month. And in 1984, we had a young fella that was the number one basketball player in high school in the nation, and he got killed. And nobody's mentioning him. All these guys coming to town, all in the NBA, none of them is mentioning him. Okay, he was at Simeon. Simeon, who remember that? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Benji Wilson. Benji Wilson. Here, nobody on television mentioned Benji Wilson. And let me tell you something about Benji Wilson. They took him to a hospital where they didn't have any doctors on staff. And that's one of the reasons why he died. Uh, he played against Magic Johnson. They were in college, he was still in high school, but they were recruiting him already to go to the pros. Right. And he got killed over a jacket. Over a jacket, was a violent thing. So when I thought about it, I reached out, because I knew where I was, was. I was the manager of the Tiger when that happened. And I reached out for his mother, found out his mother had passed away, but one of my guys, I called my street nephew, he said, well, I know his brother. And so I was able to get in touch with his brother, and tonight his brother is going to represent the family. So let's give them a big round of applause, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's him right there. Yeah. And he retired five the old man yard. And uh, uh, it's a little history with Benji that we don't know about, is that through him dying like that, his mother got a $10 million settlement against St. Bernard Hospital. Okay. And uh, with certain political... Uh, religious leader, beat her out of most of it. So we're going to talk about that. Because I don't think none of these politicians we got going today, we got to be born again in the political ring. Okay. All right, we're going to start the festivities off. 15th Amendment, and that's the amendment that allowed blacks to be able to vote in the United States. It's 150 years as of February 3rd. That's something else you didn't hear on the radio or on the news or broadcast. They had a whole lot of good stuff on this. And today is Frederick Douglass's birthday.
Thank you, Jim. I'm going to ask you to uh, give a big round of applause to the guests that honor uh, Dr. Conrad World, a uh, real-life black historian, someone to be honored and appreciated. That's what I do. And he gives me hell.
Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Yeah, so uh, not man, bro, Josh, come on, bro, for a minute, please. Done right. Rose is the um, Southside president of the NAACP. And it's an organization that we as black people got to put back in the power position that it was. You know, because uh, we're losing. Okay, where's Rose at? Rose, here we are. Okay. I think uh, black people are marching backwards instead of forward. Yeah. You know, it's a great event, isn't it? Let's give Cliff a hand, the founder of the National Veterans Association. Cliff invited me so that I could present to a very, very intelligent individual, Dr. Conrad Rowell, and I'm supposed to be presenting him an award I also want to thank the people who came with me, the people from the NAACP, our first vice president, Brenda Sharif, yeah. raise your hand, our past president of the Chicago South Side NAACP, Dr. Dorothy Lucas, and also uh, our membership chair, uh, Ernest Young the third. So before you leave tonight, why don't you take out a membership of the NAACP? Yes. The NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Membership is a lifeblood. And what we've been doing, and I've been president of the Southside NAACP since 2008. That's a long time. And people may wonder why I hold this position. Well, wanting to do something, it has to come from your inward, from within. I was born and raised in Little Rock, Arkansas. And my mother was the president of the North Little Rock branch of the NAACP. And when I moved to Chicago in 1987, or anywhere that I traveled over the United States, I would always join the NAACP because of what I saw my mother and my daddy doing during those days. We didn't like the NAACP when I was a child. But mm. my mother got us up and said, you going to the meet. <laughs> and y'all going to sing. <laughs> so right. our job at the meetings actually was to sing. Mm. So that is why that when I moved to Chicago and I joined the NAACP, I served on the committees various committees, the Veteran Affairs Committee, because I am a Grenada veteran. Right. Meaning that when I was in the military, the United States actually invaded a small island, 98% black folks, during the time that I served in the military. So a combination of actually uh, advocating for the rights of black folks and serving in the military and actually my family consists of we have served almost over a hundred years in the military service. All right, thank you. So, when I think about the NAACP and over the years our mission is to improve the social, economic equality of all persons, especially black folks. And what we have been working on for the last 10 years in our mission on the South Side is to try to avert the school to prison pipeline. So, and how do we do that? We do that working with five areas where we found that there are disparities. And what are they? Political rights and voting rights, 
right here today in Chicago, uh, the General Assembly actually passed the Automatic Voter Registration Act. And they're having some problems with the implementation of that act. And I'm pretty sure that when you heard on the news that some people who were not citizens were able to be registered to vote. Now we need, now are we concerned with that? Yeah. Well, I think if people who are not citizens who are allowed to vote will dilute our vote in our numbers. So this is an issue. And so what we did was we have asked the ISB, the Illinois State Board of Education, and also the Secretary of State who have the responsibility to ensure that the voting mechanism works because if not, we lose. Now, every time that there is an election, what do we do? We register folks to vote, we get out the vote. We never think about and talk about who's administering the vote. But we hear in the news about if uh, voting mechanisms being challenged, the security of voting mechanisms. So not only do we need to register vote and get out the vote, but what we need to also do is understand the administration of the vote. Does that make sense to you? And, 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 and we need to do that. That is the ABR. Now, it may be too late for early voting because I don't know if you knew that they have new machines that you're using that you may not be familiar with. And, they, and you will be using those machines come in the general election. So we need to make sure that the machine works. There is advocacy out here to say that don't use the machine, but ask for a ballot, a paper ballot, because you don't know that when it leaves your precinct, how it's going to be counted. Because we're dealing with technology people, and what we're talking about, and what I'm talking about, is cyber security. <coughs> but that's been happening to black folks for a long time. Yes. Yeah. So that is an area that I'm very concerned with and that we're working on. Also in the justice area, that pipeline, it keeps going. And so what we have to do is to be able to ensure that the people who are supposed to serve us, the police department, do it in a way that it does not, that does not bring about some injustice. So to avert the school to prison pipeline, we are advocating that that first thing, we need to be able <coughs> to protect our youth who come into the system, okay? We need to develop policies, and that's what we're working on, where when before a child goes into the juvenile court system, they need to be able to go to some type of support center. And we need to determine whether or not they need to go into the juvenile justice system. Because once they get in the juvenile system, in my view, in my opinion, it's over. Because they are in a system. Now, Different groups have been talking about the children needs support, the children need assessments. Children need to be assessed, they need support before they can learn. So we need to be able, that this is what I'm talking about, protecting our children, that we need to be in a school, we need to ensure that they have a quality education. We need to stop and we need to tell the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency 
to stop dumping stuff on the south and west side that may affect children's learning. We need to stop and think about it. The last census that was taken, black folk are 31% in the state of, in, in the city of Chicago. And I asked myself a question. Why is it we are not getting 31% of the city jobs and of the city contracts? So let me just say, share with you. You out here, you are the NAACP. And you need to be able to join and to help in some way. Because if we don't, we're going to be left behind. And I don't know how long that I'm going to be able to do what I'm doing. Mm. But I am here. I am here to serve. And that's what we're doing. And we need the help. <clears throat> okay. I'm trying to cover. I said environmental climate justice. I said education. I said criminal justice. I said health. Six areas. There's a problem. I get emails and there the the state of Illinois have funding to create an infrastructure to make sure that people are able to get on the internet. We need to make sure, and we need to make sure that we get that, some of that money, and also to ensure that everyone who wants to be on the internet, that they can. Now, Dr. Orrell, it, I don't know you personally or professionally, but this is why Cliff brought us together. Because when I read your Vitae, mm -hmm. your curriculum Vitae, I said, right. well, you know, he's just like me. Why mm. haven't we been talking? These areas of concern is what you wrote about and that you have done. You had a daddy who influenced you just like my parents influenced me. So why are we not talking? Why are we not coming together as a unit? Mm -hmm. And so I take this from a spiritual point of view. I said, Cliff, you might be crazy, but you're a little bit profound. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> he got me in the wrong. And I saw it, and it was very, very clear. We need to come together. Amen. We need to work together. And especially why I'm here because, hey, it's already laid out. We just kind of need the people. And if you're doing what we're doing, or if you see that what we're doing and what you're doing may be able to connect, then we want you. We're celebrating Valentine's Day. And that's about love, isn't it? Yeah. That's about love. And it's about building relationships. Okay? Yeah. So how is your relationship? And that's what I'm talking about. And on my report, I have a map of how we roll. When you take care of yourself, you take care of your family, then you can come and you can help organizations. Dr. Orwell, yes. you the man. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and I am pleased to have this honor to present this award to you because you deserve it. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. How's everybody? All right. You know, this Clifton Pierce guy is quite a manipulator. Okay. 
lived, you know, the man met me on the street and took me over, and the next thing I knew, I was a captain of hard times, and he became my best friend overnight. The man is something else. So I want to thank Clifton for this acknowledgement. I want to thank all of you all for coming tonight. Um, what was your rank in the military? What was your rank? Uh, yeah. Okay, now listen. Now let me show. Let me show you the connection. In 1983, when the United States invaded Grenada, the Prime Minister of Grenada was a friend of mine, Maurice Bishop, on this island of 100,000. So I ran down to the Chicago Defender and met with the editor and I said, this is a black nation and the United States government is invading this black country. You got to write about it. He said, you know, I don't have anybody that knows anything about that. Are you talking about Grenada, Mississippi? I said, I said no, I'm talking about Grenada, the island of Grenada. Right. So the editor, I can't remember the name of the defender, said, well, if you want to write something about Grenada and the United States invasion of Grenada, then you have to write it yourself. I said, well, I'm not a journalist. He said, well, you need to become one. Uh. And so I started writing a column in October of 1983 that became known as Warrell's World. And it's just ironic that you bring up Grenada tonight because I started writing as a journalist because of Grenada in 1983. Wow. So that's number one. Number two, when I was nine years old, my daddy lived across the street. We had moved from California. And we had a little dog. And this was a Chicago Park District abandoned, closed down police station uh, in 1950. And eventually, we're on the space of the great Margaret Burroughs who fought and finally got to this edifice that's now the Du Sable Museum that moved out of her house on 38th and Michigan. This is black history, yes, but yeah, y'all yeah, do know you shouldn't have never yes, given me a microphone. And I've been sitting over there and you know we've been talking this is a black evening of a black occasion and a black institution and we need to share a little black history. Now the best thing that Clifton did in promoting this on the internet, he must have promoted my name one million times on the internet. But he put out a post and said, if any high park people who graduated or went to school with Conrad World, please come tonight to this occasion. Right, right. So we got one person that I actually graduated with from High Park, who I haven't seen since May of 1959. <laughs> The great Sandra Cooper, who was fine and she wanted to be then in Hyde Park, and she's still fine. So Sandra and I have been back there debriefing for an hour and a half, about 60 years of history, All where right. we hadn't seen each other. Stand up, Sandra. Thank you. <laughs> so I, in closing, I'd just like to thank, you know, I'm kind of humble. I'm not really into getting awards. I haven't been doing all this work to get an award. But to get an award from Clifton Pierce, the man that runs lounges and manipulates people and, <laughs> and acknowledges people who sometimes don't get acknowledged, That's it's right. a great honor. My friend Ron gave me a ride over here tonight. I see a few people I know, Tianda. I've known Tianda for a long time, Sistra and W.L. Little. There are a few people in here I've known for a number of years and our work here in the city of Chicago. So I'm just honored. I want to thank you, Clifton. Don't manipulate me no more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's give it up for him. All right, huh? Because <laughs> everybody better me, he wasn't coming. Thank you, Ron, so much. Um, no time. When? Uh, once again, the NBA All-Star Game comes to Chicago, and in 1985, we had a young fellow that was nominated the number one high school basketball player in the nation, and he got killed. 
Yeah, so when I thought about the fact that the NBA was here and they wasn't honoring this young man, I reached out for his mother and found out that she had passed away, but this is, her, this is his brother. So I'm going to let him tell a little story about uh, his brother and who his name was. In fact, he went to Simeon. Number one high school ball player in the nation gets killed over a jacket. Happy Valentine's Day. Well, the ladies look beautiful, I Amen. must say. Very happy Valentine's Day. Well, I'm here, like Cliff said, he reached out to me, and I was honored, and I'm honored to be here tonight, and fortunate to still be standing. But in the words that I think my mother would have said would be just thank you and all the prayers and tears that were shed back in 84. I want you to know that they all helped, that everybody that gave a who, we felt it and we, my family appreciates it. And uh, since the NBA didn't have time, to recognize my little brother. I'd just like to say uh, a few uh, facts. Uh, ben Wilson had the biggest funeral in Chicago's history. No question. And the media said that he was only second to the great late Mayor Daly which was not true, but it didn't seem right to say that a young black kid had a bigger funeral than Mayor Daly. So, with that being said, basketball, the best players in basketball out of all the greats that came out of Chicago, Benji, was the first to be ranked number one in the United States. And like I said, he had the biggest funeral in, the United, in Chicago. And no one recognized him. You know, uh, all praise is due to uh, the people that died in that crash with Kobe Bryant, and I felt it also. But, um, what I like to say uh, is, after all Benji did, I have cousins that live in Rock Island, Illinois, and they came here with their friends to go to Simeon. Simeon received over $10 million to build that beautiful new gym they have. But they were gonna tear the school down, but they couldn't tear it down after they spent all the money for the gym. So because of Benji, that beautiful building, Simeon, is standing now. Everybody and has to You can go into Simeon right now. There's not one picture, mm. not one news clipping. Mm. They even reinserted his jersey after it was supposed to be retired. So I didn't like that, but you know, you roll with the punches, and the best thing that came out of it was after Benji died, they took him to a hospital with no surgeons on duty and no blood banks. And my mother sued the hospital for that. She did not sue the fire department. I want to get that perfect clear it was the hospital and uh, that's their job to take you to the nearest hospital then but to think of all the lives that have been saved by taking young blacks innocent blacks stand by kids honest students are living now because they have to take them to a trauma center this all came out of Ben Wilson's passing, so it did do a great thing, and 
myself being a 28 year veteran on the fire department, I personally have been in the back of the ambulance with young black kids that's been shot up and they look up at me and they say, Mr. Fireman, am I going to live? And they teach you in the academy not to lie to people, don't give them false hopes, but don't lie to them. And I, I can only tell this one kid, hey, you stand a good chance because you're going to Christ and it's a trauma unit, and they know you're on your way. So I, you do have a good chance. And after that, every time I got in the back of the ambulance and doing CPR and helping the paramedics, I know that some good came from Benji's passing, and it made me feel good. And all you people make me feel good. And I just want to say thank you and thank you for coming. Right. I've been seeing this brother, but his brother's high school basketball coach, uh, Robert Hambray. I did battle against him because I thought I was a ball player. <laughs> but in 1984, I believe it was November, I was driving to Peoria, Illinois, because my daughter was a freshman um, scholarship basketball player. And one of the other freshmen was a teammate, Tim Bankston of Ben Wilson. So for you all to not understand the context of this, in March of 1984, Simeon won the state championship. Mm -hmm. Ben Wilson was a junior and his uh, skills as an emerging number one high school basketball player in the country mm -hmm. had been identified. So this shook up the whole basketball world because his future was so bright as a student athlete. And so with those of us who were old ball players, this ran deep in our system. So when I drove up on the campus of Bradley University, I went to find my daughter to find Tim Bankston, his teammate, who was now a freshman, who had been on the state championship team with him to give the word about Ben Wilson. So I never made this connection until just now. And I want to tell you, Ben Wilson, you did a great thing, Cliff. You brought some people you together did. to yes. make these type of historical connections. And so I understand yesterday at Malcolm X, they rolled out the Reconciliation movie. Were you there? No. Yeah, but you knew about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't know you was a fireman. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, Kay. How about that, huh? Yeah. You know. Uh, Mr. Boyd, you here? Okay. Um, <clears throat> you know, I received absolutely no help from the city. And I'm going to say this again. You know, I went out and got a 501c3. I've never been in the system in my life, but I believed in what I was trying to do so much that I went in the system and filed my name. I had an agreement with the government. Y'all don't ask me nothing, I don't ask y'all for nothing. Okay, but I believed in what I'm trying to do here because mm -hmm. I had some major surgery a few years back, and by me being popular, my room stayed full, but it was so many other people up there that nobody ever came to see. And I say, when I get out of here, I'm going to take care of uh, these old people. So that's what I'm kind of trying to do now. But it's hard for me to understand how the NBA would be in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I have a building that's the most black, iconic building in the city. And they don't support me. I find that awful hard. I'm legitimized, you know, the whole night now. That's why I, did, I got the application and everything. But anyway, uh, Sandy, come on. Sandy is who uh, Dr. World was talking about. Oh, there he is right there. Still looking good for real. I'm going to tell you who, who she's spending on her. Siander went. Um, she's spending on her. And happy Valentine's Day. Uh, this young lady that I'm getting ready to introduce is my friend a friend that everybody should have. 
I love her, and I thank God that I was able to meet her along the way. But she is a global thinker. Mm -hmm. She can do just about everything. Mm. And she's a very smart, brilliant woman. But I want to tell you a few things that she can do, that she has done. Uh, her education, she has a BS in criminal justice. Mm. She has certificates in paralegal construction management. She can read blueprints. Uh, she's a tax credit uh, specialist. Uh, she's certified in doing uh, uh, in procurement. Uh, I don't know what uh, Tiandra, she can do everything. And uh, let me tell you some of the things that she has done. The director of the uh, South Shore uh, Chambers. She's also the chief of the staff of State of Illinois for the top, uh, Department of Human Services. She's been a project manager in technology uh, for the Chicago Public Schools. Uh, she's, an she's been a specialist executive assistant to the Chicago Housing Authority. She's been a, a vice president of operations for the Chicago Boys and Girls Club. Wow. Now, this young lady here, you just don't really, you can't imagine the things that she can do. I love her, and I'm going to introduce you to Kiander. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kiander Worth. I would like to say thank you to Cliff for giving me this award, and it's in honor of Dara Holder. Um, she passed away a couple of months ago, and we all miss her. She was a person that gave the most um, and, and as often as she could, and she was a helpmate to Operation Push. Um, she'll be missed, and I'm honored to be able to get an award in her name, the very first one. So thank you, and thanks Cliff and everyone else for coming. Okay, let's give it up for Keanu. That's a helping hand award. Those are two hands helping each other. Okay, we also have uh, um, soon to be Judge Sutton. Arthur Sutton. Arthur Sutton. Attorney Sutton. Works in the criminal justice. Uh, he's running for a judge. He's going to come up and speak for us. 15 minutes. Okay. You tell him I don't go on colorful time. This thing after his own time. So, uh, Mr. Sutton, listen, long before I met this charismatic man, I heard a song that he made. It's called, I Got an Angel. You got, you got that? See if you can pull that up. I got an angel. So let's give a big round of applause for Mr. Sutton. Did he come up? All right. He's running for judge. Come on up, boss. And he's the clown. <laughs> but he's one of us. He's regular for real. And I want everybody to support him. What's that number again? 198. 198. <laughs> First, I want to say good evening to everyone. And if you're happy to see another Valentine's Day, clap your hands. Amen. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I always honor God for allowing me to even be alive today to be here. And I want to thank my brother, Cliff for allowing me this space. Yes, you all, I am running for judge countywide for the Mary Ann Mason vacancy that runs our city of Chicago and all of the surrounding suburban areas. And there's a lot of ground to cover, so I want you all to be um, spread the word about me. Tell you a little bit about myself. All right. It's going to be in the primaries coming up for Illinois. The primary is on March 17th. The early voting is, is March the 2nd. All right, I want everybody to remember that. And you remember my, my name and my song. Over me. This is my song. I wrote it and I'm playing. I got an angel. 
Come on, wait a little longer. Come on up. And my angel, I know, I know I can't see it. I got an angel. <laughs> degree from there, went on to Governor State, pursued a master's degree in public administration, went from there, and went on to get my Juris Doctor degree in St. Paul, Minnesota. Married to a wonderful lady, there she is right there. All right. Y'all clap your hands for my I've been on the campaign trail, I said I didn't know what we were going to do, but I thought about Clips event, uh, take her out, 25 years, three children. I've been practicing law for 26 years. Diverse practice doing civil and criminal work. Been in law enforcement for over 35 years. Found qualified by all of the bars. They call me the second chance candidate. Why? I believe in second chances. Especially for our youth. Especially for our youth. Nonviolent first offender. Nonviolent first offender. I believe in trying to get them some help. So I believe in trying to establish alternatives to incarceration. But I can't do any of these things without your help. If you're looking for compassion in the courtroom, that's me. That's a vote for me. If you're looking for patience in the courtroom, that's a vote for me. If you're looking for integrity in the courtroom, that's a vote for me. If you're looking for fairness in the courtroom, hey, to all people, that's a vote for me. But listen, let me tell y'all this. I can't do it unless you all, on March the 17th, look for my name. My name is Arthur D. Sutton. They gave me my punch number is 198. So don't make a mistake. Punch 198. Don't make a mistake. Punch 198. Don't hesitate. If you want somebody great, on March 17th, punch 198. Let me hear y'all say it. One, One more time, set. One, God bless you, and it's ending right with the song. How about that? Y'all clap your hands for Cliff. Thank you, Cliff. All right, now, all right. How about that? Okay. Lizzie. Good job. Good job. Yes, sir. We got a young lady here that I've been knowing for quite a while on the deck. Stepping scene had no idea she could sing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. No problem. We got the right page till 10 o'clock. <laughs> okay. Mazine, come on. William, you got some Steppers music? Listen, she's from the Steppers community. 
That's right. Okay, and then uh, I can stop. Now, uh, who's that? You know the step of music when you bring it home. Bob, you come? Go ahead. That's you. That's you. It's about See, he's the partner. Come on, come on. Come on. Like I can say, she's from the Stephens community. I had no idea she could sing.
I've been running up ever since. It's been a long, 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 long time coming, but I know change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. It's been too hard living. I'm afraid to die. Oh, Lord, I don't know what's up there. No, 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 no. Beyond the sky. It's been a long, long, long time coming, but I know change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. And I go to the movies and I go downtown. People keep telling me, don't you show them back, don't you show them back, don't you hang around. It's been a long, oh, baby, long time coming, but I know. Change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. Bum, 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 bum. When I go to my brother, I said, Brother, help me, please. Oh, but they wind up knocking me back down. Oh, and Lord, there have been times that I thought would last for long. But now that I know that I'm able to maybe talking to y'all out there to carry on. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will, and he, he, yeah. Oh, yeah, thank y'all so much. All right, let's give it up for that show. I'm not going to have a show when he's not on it. Ladies and gentlemen, our featured uh, speaker for tonight has arrived. So without further ado, we're going to bring him up for you. Uh, let's give a big round of applause, hopefully, for the next clerk of the court. Richard Boyson. Right. Yeah, they can't do better than that, huh? Yeah, come on, wake up, y'all. Richard Boykin. Let's give a big round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Cliff. I appreciate it. How's everybody tonight? Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hotel. Hotel. All right. Somebody know about it. Uh, can you tell the folks back there to shh? Tell them, hey, if they want to hold a conversation, they can go outside. It's okay. I'm not going to be before you long. I'm Richard Boykin, and I am a candidate for Cork of the Circuit Court of Cook County. I'm not going to talk about that tonight. I'm going to talk about the importance of black history since we're here at the Sabo Museum. Look, I've always been told that life is but a minute, just 60 seconds in it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it. Forced upon us, we generally suffer if we abuse it that tiny little minute, but all of eternity is wound up in it. You know, when I was thinking about coming over here and thinking about my growing up in Inglewood, I thought about Langston Hughes and that poem that he pen mother to son where he said life for me ain't been no crystal stair that's right it's had some tacks in it some boards some places where there's been no carpet on the floor it's been bare he said but i just keep on climbing and reaching landings and until i reach my goal and so then i also think about frederick Douglass, and where frederick Douglass said that struggle struggle strife those are the prerequisites for change. They always have been and always will be. And then I think about what we're going through in our country right now where we've got a guy in the White House who ought, ought to be in the outhouse, but we're going to get him out of there. 
right? Because we're going to go exercise our right to vote. And we're going to get them out. But I think about what Fannie Lou Hamer said when she said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Or I think about somebody like a Rosa Parks who helped to spark the Montgomery bus boycott, where she said, no, nah, I'm not going to the back of the bus. I'm going to sit right here because I'm tired of what's happening. I think about these great heroes and sheroes who have actually paved the way for all of us. We all stand on the shoulders of giants. I think about those modern day heroes, people like Congressman Danny Davis and people like Senator Carol Mosley Braun, the first African American female to serve in the United States Senate. I think about people like Bobby Rush, who's the first Black Panther to serve in the Congress of the United States. But I also think about uh, those people who may not have made the, the, the history books those folks who we all look up to, those mothers and fathers who have paved the way for all of us. Yes. And so really black history is part of American history. That's right. It really began long before 1619, where, you know, you had the slave ships come to Jamestown, Virginia. So many people think that our history began then. No. Yes, sir. Our history is a rich history. It's a history of kings and queens in yes, Africa. Yes, it is a history of building civilizations. Yeah, yes, it is a history of actually creating science and mathematics and problems that people can't even conceptualize today. It's a history of building brick and building pyramids. It's a history of doing all of that with little of nothing. But then when we fast forward to the United States in 1619 and slave ships coming here, and you think about people like Denmark Vesey and Nat Turner, and you think about people who said, uh, I'd rather die and be in my grave than to be a slave. You think about people who said, look, I'm not gonna be a part of this slave concept. I'm gonna fight for freedom. And you think about what's happening today in our society, where I'm getting ready to do a press conference on Monday, and I'm doing a press conference on there ought to be automatic expungement. Look, yes. in 2018, and I got the records today, there were 245,000 black folks arrested in, this, in, in, in Cook County, 245,000. In that same year, about 80,000 white people mm. were arrested. But get this, here's the thing you gotta check out. The white folks and the Latinos were grouped together. So really they watered down that number. It's probably 20,000 white folks or less, and most of them Latinos. But 245,000 black folks. Of that number, about 28,000 of those cases got dropped. So what am I talking about? Why do we have to have automatic expungement? Because what is happening here is that we moved up from slavery and we got emancipation, but then of course you got segregation, you got the black codes, you got other things that held us back, you got Jim Crow, you got all of these things that held us back. Well now what's holding too many of us back, and especially black men, is that the police arrest you, the state's attorney drops the charges, but guess what? You still got a record. And when you get ready to apply for a job at a bank, or you get ready to apply for a job at a law firm, that arrest record's gonna come up on your background check. Now you might think, you might say, I'm free. Let me tell you, they did not proceed with the case. They dropped the charges. True, they did. But guess what? That arrest is still on your record. Now, read an article yesterday in the Sun-Times where they talked about police who are at the end of their shift and they actually do this thing we call trolling where you actually go and look for somebody to arrest so that you can get some overtime. Mm -hmm. Now, I pray to God that that is not happening. If that is happening, there's something 
grown with us. Mm -hmm. We should never let that happen, not in Chicago, not in Cook County, not anywhere in the United States of America. And so we've made some progress. We've had our first black president. But guess what? We still got too many of our people mired in poverty. We still got too many of our people trapped in, in hopelessness. Somebody said it like this. They said that uh, man can live about 40 days without food, about three days without water, about eight minutes without oxygen, but not one second without hope. And so we got too many of our boys and too many of our girls in communities that are hopeless. They need somebody to look up to. We got so many champions. We got people who have just been giants. And we look at them and we think they're midgets, but they're really giants and because they've done so much for us and for our freedom. But we got to keep on singing those freedom songs. We got to keep on saying like James Cleveland, I don't feel no ways tired. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe that he brought me this far to leave me. We got to keep on singing those freedom songs because I believe that God wants us to be free. Amen. But freedom begins in our heart and it begins in our minds. Amen. And we got to make sure that we do everything that we can to exercise our rights and our responsibilities and our freedom. And I simply want to say to you tonight that you really are like the light of the world. You're like that city set upon a hill whose light cannot be hidden. Nor do men light a lamp and put it underneath a bed. But rather they put it on a lampstand so that everybody in the house can see the way. People, this is our house. This is our county. This is our state. I'm encouraging you to let your light shine. When you let your light shine, communities begin to get transformed. When you let your light shine, we get a strong community benefits agreement for the Obama Library. Hmm. When you let your light shine, the Sable Museum becomes a great museum. It becomes one of the jewels of our country. It becomes the kind of museum that everybody, whenever they come to Chicago, they want to get to the Sable Museum. They treat it like it's the field museum, right? It's got to be on that level. When you let your light shine, chains begin to break and people begin to get free. When you let your light shine, people begin to get healed. When you let your light shine, it says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. It says that darkness must flee. It cannot stay anymore. I'm encouraging you to let your light shine tonight. Thank you all so much. God bless you. And may God bless the Sabo Museum. And God bless African American people. That we will stand up and be the people that God has called us to be. Thank you so much. God bless everybody. Thank you.